Humans are helping robots develop some crazy superhuman skills. Let me tell you, mechanical engineers at Stanford University in California have created these little robots that can hold things that weigh over a hundred times more than themselves. These super strong bots will be presented next month at the International Conference on Robotics and Automation in Seattle, Washington. The secret is in the adhesive on the robot's feet. Nick, this is pretty, pretty exciting. First of all, because they're using biology to get inspired to make these robots do things that are almost unthinkable. The design is inspired by geckos, which have obviously legendary climbing skills in the animal kingdom. We have a video that we want to share with you guys of how these work. Well, I explain a little bit of how they did this feat. First, what they do is they cover their feet with these rubber spikes that grip firmly onto the wall as the rubber climbs. When the pressure is applied, obviously, the surface area increases and the stickiness, the robot picks up the foot and the spikes straighten out, detach easily. And now we see that they can pull this crazy weight, sometimes a hundred times more than what they weight. The crazy thing is not that they only mimic the geckos, they also mimic the inchworms and how they move forward to be able to pull this crazy weight. It's, isn't this exciting? Of course it's exciting. It's, it's, it's awesome. I want to see where it's going to go from here. Yeah, it's cool that a little robot can pull a 45-pound weight, but I want to know what happens when we build this on a much larger scale and you have a, uh, one of these robots that are the size of a car pulling something the size of a building. That's going to be freaking awesome. And I want to know uh, how humans will apply that in the future. Exactly. Um, for example, you, you go into a disaster zone like an earthquake. It can move rocks. It can do this. It can do that. It's going to be really exciting. I love it. And the most promising of these designs is this little guy called the Utog. The Utog, the guy in the picture right now, weighs only 12 grams. Yet, he can pull 2,000 times its weight as it moves forward. The main scientific uh, lead on this uh, program in Stanford is David Christensen, and he said that this amounts to be like a human pulling a blue whale. Oh, wow. This is a lot. But... What you said, what are we doing? What are the applications that we can do? I think when I was researching, I thought about how we can attach these little robots to exosuits, and then suddenly a human has the ability to pick up. And like you said, in a rescue mission, sometimes it takes 10, 20 people to lift a rock to take someone out. Maybe with this, we can build some, 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 some sort of suit that can help a human take action right away, but well, also that's, that's, that's inhuman. That's scary, because then we're exactly, going to have superheroes exactly. and bad guys. I, I don't, I don't are know. we that close to developing the Iron Man suit? Some say that we are. I mean, but this is the proof that the technology and the inventive, it's out there, yeah. and it's working. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people might argue about how, you know, the, the direction that we're moving in, we have robots taking jobs doing this and that, but it's like, at the same time, that's inevitable. You yes. can't, you can't kind of apply, you know, today's society, put it to the future with our same way of thinking and just add on the robots because that's not how it yeah. works. Society changes as the technology changes with it because, you know, we can't just say, oh, we're going to get all the jobs taken away by it. Robots are going to be doing everything. That's not how it works. I'm sure back in the day, everyone was up in arms about Gutenberg's printing press. All the monks were saying, well, who the hell is going to write all these Bibles and do all that? Society changes. Jobs get taken away in one place, but they get created in another Progress. way. Progress. I think the solution, one of the solutions to this is as humans prepare ourselves more so we can actually be the ones writing the code telling these robots what to do versus being the ones tending to these robots to work at their highest capacity like we do in an assembly line. We do have a lot of works still available for humans but most of them are making sure a machine works to its best. And it's a matter of time be it's a before all factory workers are robots. I exactly. mean, that's inevitable as well. You know, we see in Amazon and their, store, and their warehouses, they have robots doing some, some works, some jobs that humans use and to And the do. drones will deliver it. And the drones will deliver So we'll see that this is inevitable. We'll have this technology be part of our life, but if we prepare ourselves, if we become um, intellectual beings versus doers, mm -hmm. then maybe we'll have better jobs telling the robots what to do versus maintaining the robots. So or or we'll, we will become enslaved by the robots. Some will say. We want to know what do you think? Do you think this is the end of the struggle for the rescue and the factory places where they need to leave these big weights and now we have the technology to do it? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the Lib TV too.